Hey guys, what's up? This is Don and welcome to another Cinema 4D tutorial. And today I'm going to be showing you how to make and prepare 3D logos inside of Cinema 4D alone. There's been a lot of um, tutorials uh, on this topic, but um, I don't think there are many which, in my opinion, do uh, give you enough information to really get you going. But uh, anyway, I'm just going to be showing you how I go about it and hopefully you may learn something new. So I have loaded up the VF logo into my front viewport. If you want to load any image into any viewport, you first of all go to the viewport and then press shift followed by V. And this will bring up the display attributes for that viewport. You then want to go to uh, the back tab and then under image you can browse and find your image. Okay, so this is what I'm going to be working off of to uh, generate a 3D version of this. So if I go to my spline tools, I can get the linear spline and basically start drawing a spline around this. It's pretty simple and straightforward. You just follow the edge. You don't have to be precise on this first um, on this first uh, round, uh, making all these points. We'll be fine tuning them later as we go on. And then I'm just gonna do this other bit, and I basically end up with uh, two different splines. And uh, write this all because I have uh, this section here and this section uh, over here. Okay, so when you have your spines finished, this may look uh, good enough for you, but uh, you may want to go and fine tune some of the points. My image right now is way too bright. I'm going to press shift followed by V to bring up my display attributes and then just dial in this transparency control. I'm going to go all the way to something like 95 so I can still see the outline but uh, I can now also clearly see my splines. So I basically want to make sure that uh, all these points, for example, across the top are on the same line, on the same horizontal um, axis. So if I go to point mode, get my rectangle selection, I can get uh, all of these points. And uh, before I get all of them, let me just get one. So this one at the end here, this is the height that I want the rest to follow. And it is 220.427. We can maybe just round that down to 220 just to keep things simple. Okay, let's uh, now select all of these points. And then I'm going to go to Mesh, um, Commands, and then Set Point Value. And uh, we're going to set uh, the Y value to set and set this to 220. And when I hit apply, all of the points that I have selected will now conform to that Y value. So now all these points are exactly on the same vertical line. That's exactly what I want. I can do the same for these points along here. So if I get this point, for example, for reference, this is on 144.967. So let's round it off to 145. And then let's select um, all of these points right here. Let's uh, go to Mesh, Commands, Set Point Value, and let's set the, um, the Y value to 145 and hit Apply. And now all these points should now conform to that one vertical, I mean the horizontal line. Okay, looking pretty good. I can, um, when there's two, for example, like this, I can just do this manually. So this point here is on minus 218.983. I would just make this minus 219. I like to work with whole numbers all the time. I think it just keeps things uh, easier to follow. And then I'll just copy that value and paste it to the other point. So now that's perfectly straight. And, uh, this is looking pretty good. I'm just making sure it's following all the edges correctly. I think this needs to go down to about here. And uh, the rest seems to be pretty good. 
as far as the V goes anyway. Okay, let's say move on to this other piece. Let's copy this Y position, 61.47. Let's just make it uh, 61. Let's also make this 61. This one is 12.103, so minus 12 and minus 12. That was actually exactly the same, so uh, I must have just done that by accident. Okay, so now we have uh, perfectly straight edges. Our logo is now very precise, and we can now start to convert it to 3D. So I'm just going to get uh, the extrude nerves and drop both of these splines into extrude nerves. Now what will happen is only the spline which is at the top uh, or the, the immediate child of the extrude nerves will be affected. The other spline will be left behind. And what I see a lot of people do at this point is remove the spline from here, get another extrude nerves and then uh, put that into there. But you actually don't need to do that. If you um, click on extrude nerves, there's a control down here called hierarchical and if you just click that it will extend um, to all the splines which are a child of that extrude nerves. So you don't need to have multiple extrude nerves or you don't need to join your splines because you may want to actually come in here and uh, animate these individually and if they're one spine you obviously won't be able to do that. Okay, I'm going to increase the depth of this to maybe 50, maybe even more, something like 100. I think that's too much. Let me go for 65. And that looks um, pretty good. And then I'm going to go to caps and then the start and the end, I'll put a fillet cap and fillet cap. And if I go to my uh, front view, I can just check that this is not going out of bounds of my um, original outline, and it is. I only want the red section here to contain the 3D geometry. Right now it's going outside of the black lines in some areas, uh, but in some areas it's actually staying in. So what you can do then, um, if you don't want your logo to expand, as you increase the radius of the caps. So if I make this 10, for example, what happens is my logo will just keep expanding in volume. If you want to maintain volume, you have to click this control here called constraint. And now as you increase these values, you will always maintain volume. And uh, you can actually create like a really nice beveled effect that way. Okay, let's um, keep the radius at just 5 and 5 and let's uh, set the steps to maybe 3 and 3 on each one and uh, let's keep our constraint switch on. So this looks uh, pretty good. Let's uh, start lighting this now and uh, applying materials. So I'm going to create um, a very basic material. This is just going to be red. If I go to reflection, I can add Fresnel. Uh, maybe put the brightness of the reflection to 35 and the Fresnel brightness to 60. Make it 30 and 60. And I'm going to go to specular and just uh, dial down the width but increase the height so we have a nice glossy highlight. Let's drop this onto our logo and this is what it looks like. We can um, get some lights, so the first light is going to be our key light. Let's uh, bring this out here to the front, a bit to the left and then bring it up. So it's on a 45 degree angle to the, uh, to the logo. And then we'll duplicate it, call it the fill. And let's uh, put it across to the other side. And lower the intensity to something like 35. Uh, a 1 to 4 ratio works pretty well between the key light and the fill light. So if we make this 25, that's even better. 
we'll duplicate the fill light and call this the backlight and this is gonna go directly behind our logo about here maybe just above maybe slightly to one of the sides so left or right depending on what you want I almost always put mine on the right because I like to have um, highlights on this side of the text and let's say I put the intensity to 150 so it's nice and bright and we can see it on there so just a quick render nothing too special right now let's say uh, add some reflection in our scene uh, but before I do that actually I'm going to convert some of these light types so the key light I like to have this as an area light most of the time increase the the, the radius and let's target it directly onto the logo so if I right click cinema 4d tags I can put a target tag and then just uh, drop my logo into the target object and now the light is going to face in that direction I'm going to copy the same tag and put it on all the lights and let me convert the fill light to be also an area light and uh, just make it large and the backlight is going to be a spotlight I think spotlights create a really uh, strong rays and uh, they create a lot of contrast whereas area lights the um, the illumination tends to be a lot softer and provides good overall sort of ambient type of lighting. I'm gonna go to all the lights and add an area shadow but uh, we may be removing this uh, in place of ambient occlusion but area shadows right now look pretty good. Uh, in fact that, that they're not really doing much so I'm gonna remove that for now and I will add ambient occlusion to do the shadowing later. Okay, uh, pretty good. Let's uh, add some fall off to these lights. So go to fall off, inverse square clamped. Uh, you can try out the other modes and see what you can come up with. But I personally like inverse square clamped or inverse square uh, physically accurate. Okay, uh, the spotlight seems to be on top already so that's fine I'm gonna hide these lights so I don't get these lines going across my entire scene and uh, now I can create an environment to create a more interesting look on our logo because right now we just have red and some highlights we want some uh, reflection also so if I uh, insert a sky object I can create a new material for this and whilst I'm doing this, I'm gonna um, enable interactive render. So you can see what's happening um, and get a live update. Let's say increase the quality to max. And uh, if I get this material, I'm gonna go to the color channel and create a gradient. And let's drop this onto the sky. I actually do not want to see the sky in my scene so I'm going to right click add a compositing tag and uh, untick scene by camera okay so we just have this I'm going to go to the gradient change it to 2d V so I bring this over here so we can uh, have more space and I'm just gonna play around with this gradient by duplicating these points so I'm just holding control and dragging to the left or to the right. I'm just creating a random uh, pattern. And uh, you can just play around with this, see what works for you and uh, keep experimenting. So this is uh, the result. Now I have some uh, variation across um, my logo and it looks way more interesting. I'm gonna copy this to the luminance channel and paste. So these are just a little bit uh, stronger. And we could use this as lighting if we wanted, but uh, we're not gonna do that. I'm also gonna improve the anti-aliasing of my uh, render. There's a lot of noise on these edges and uh, I'm gonna go to anti-aliasing, set this to best. 
one by one, four by four is fine whilst I'm working. Uh, when I do a final render, I may bump those up. So this is looking a lot better than before, but I'm still not uh, particularly happy with it. Uh, the material itself, I think, needs adjusting. I'm gonna go to the reflection and set the color to some kind of red. And uh, that just uh, maybe cuts down some of those highlights a little bit and uh, brings more saturation to the color of uh, the logo. Another thing which I like to do sometimes is to uh, disable linear workflow. This is uh, something which is default in um, any version of Cinema 4D after 11.5. And uh, I find when I'm working with uh, 3D logos, uh, they look better without it uh, most of the time. It's not always, but um, I find for the majority of the time, linear workflow really washes out my logos. So if I turn it on, you can see that it looks washed out and uh, I really don't like this look. So I'm going to disable linear workflow and now I have more saturation, more contrast and I much prefer this. There's not a lot of uh, illumination under here. You can see it's just black. So what I can do is uh, disable this interactive render for now. Let me bring back my lights. I'm going to duplicate the fill light and let's bring it down and under our project. And uh, I think I'm moving both the sky and the fill light. I duplicated the sky by accident. So just duplicate the fill light. Let's bring it uh, down here somewhere. A little closer maybe. And further down. Maybe a little bit to the right. And uh, we're going to call this the bounce light. The bounce light is used to introduce some more detail from uh, underneath your object. So now if I go up close and uh, do a render, I can now see some of those faces instead of just them being completely blacked out. Okay, um, this is looking a lot better the, than when we uh, started. Let's uh, add some ambient occlusion maybe. So if I go to effect, uh, ambient occlusion, and put the minimum ray length to 25 and the max ray length to maybe 150. And uh, when I do a render, this will take a little longer. But now I have some uh, shadowing um, underneath here. Maybe I'm gonna bump up that uh, minimum ray length to something like, I don't know, 75. And uh, that's just gonna add in more shadows. But uh, this is a uh, completely uh, a personal uh, taste thing. You could have a uh, completely different preferences. So just adjust this accordingly to what you want. And uh, yeah, you'll be good to go. One more thing which I sometimes do uh, with logos, especially one like this where the, f uh, the face is just completely flat and uh, the surface on its own is not really catching any type of highlight or any type of reflection. I like to bend the entire logo to create a slight curve and that's gonna, that's gonna catch uh, some of those highlights and reflections. Um, I've also made other tutorials and it may be you have already seen them depending on the order you watch these tutorials. Uh, I made one called how to create a chiseled text effect and one for a beveled text effect. And uh, in those tutorials, we basically say no to this uh, flat front surface and create something which is way more interesting and catches more detail. So you can watch those if you want. But um, if you wanna keep your logo relatively uh, flat faced, there's another trick you can do. Uh, it's a three part process, I think. If you, first of all, go to your splines set the intermediate points from adaptive to uniform and then you want to bump up the number to something like 32 and um, this looks pretty good and uh, if I go to the extrude nerves itself I'm gonna go to uh, the type and set this to quadrangles 
and then tick regular grid and I'm gonna have a width of just five so we have a lot of subdivision on the surface here maybe something like seven to sort of match this segments going back and then I'm gonna go to the object tab of my extrude nerves and set the subdivision to maybe five or so um, maybe even more maybe seven and that looks uh, pretty good and then I'm gonna uh, right click and group this into a null and call this logo and then I'm gonna go to my deformers and get the bend and drop this inside here this needs to be above all your objects to work and then I'm gonna set the strength to just 10 and uh, I'm gonna change the angle to 90 so now my logo is slightly uh, curved just a touch and uh, what this means is when I render I get a slight um, uh, more detail on the faces here and uh, catch more highlights this material is not doing me justice so I'm gonna try and adjust it or maybe increase uh, the bend to something like 15 but uh, this may be way too much and too noticeable I'm just trying to illustrate the effect so it's alright I'm gonna bring up my interactive render let's go to the specular make it a little wider and as I do that you can see that this face is collecting a lot more uh, highlight and uh, detail we can go to the reflection and lower the Fresnel and maybe bump up the brightness and uh, I can see this area is getting darker this area up is getting lighter this is because of our sky um, environment okay looking uh, pretty good I'm gonna bump this uh, way up and um, yeah that's it that is how you um, prepare and uh, render logos in Cinema 4D I hope you found this tutorial helpful and uh, if there's something that I missed out or something you would like to know then by all means feel free to send in your questions uh, using the comment section below and uh, I will do my best to answer them but uh, once again thank you for watching I will see you in the next video